The information in this video is based on the most current information available at the time of production. While Affordable Safety Training works hard to make sure these materials are current, the employer has sole responsibility for compliance with all laws, regulations, and standards. This video is sold with the understanding that AST is not providing professional or legal advice. Employers should have a reliable source for current regulatory information and best practices. The purpose of lockout tagout is to protect employees from unexpected startup or release of hazardous energy that may occur while performing servicing and maintenance on machines or equipment. In most instances, physical locks are attached to energy isolating devices to protect employees from hazardous energy or unexpected startup. In some uncommon instances, a tag may be used instead of a physical lock. The Occupational Safety and Health Administration regulates lockout tagout with 29 CFR 1910.147, the control of hazardous energy. The standard requires employers to train employees on lockout tagout, provide written lockout tagout procedures, provide lockout tagout equipment, perform periodic inspections of lockout tagout effectiveness. Keep appropriate records and documentation. Employees must use lockout tagout when required. Complete lockout tagout training. Not operate equipment or machinery that is locked or tagged out. Lockout tagout is required when performing servicing or maintenance of machines and equipment that may involve unexpected startup or exposure to hazardous energy. Lockout tagout is also required during normal production operations when an employee must remove or bypass a guard or safety device. It is also required if the employee puts any part of their body into the area where work is performed on the material or where a danger zone exists. Lockout tagout is not required during most normal production operations, which is simply using the machine or equipment for its intended production function. Lockout tagout is also not required when the equipment can be isolated from the energy source with a single plug, and it is under the exclusive control of the employee performing the work. Types of hazardous energy Electrical Mechanical Chemical Hydraulic Pneumatic Thermal Steam Gravity Which hazardous energies exist in your work area? Protect yourself. Know the hazards of your work area. Tagout is defined as the placement of a tagout device on an energy isolating device, in accordance with an established procedure, to indicate that the energy isolating device, and the equipment being controlled, may not be operated until the tagout device is removed. Tagout is not as effective as lockout, because it provides a warning, but no physical barrier, to prevent energy from being restored to a system. Tags must be marked with clear warnings informing employees not to operate the device. If tagout is used, the employer must be able to demonstrate the tagout operation as equivalent in safety to a lockout operation. This may require the employer to take extra steps, such as removing a valve handle or blocking a control switch.
An authorized person, is a person who locks out, or tags out, machines or equipment, in order to perform servicing, or maintenance. Authorized employees are the only ones who can apply, and remove, lockout tagout devices. Lockout tagout procedures must be completed by the authorized employee who will be performing the servicing or maintenance. Authorized employees must be trained on recognition of applicable hazardous energy sources, the type and magnitude of the energy available in the workplace, the methods and means necessary for energy isolation and control. Affected employees are employees whose job requires them to operate or use a machine or equipment on which servicing or maintenance is being performed under lockout or tagout. If they work in an area where servicing or maintenance is being performed, they are also considered an affected employee. Affected employees may not apply or remove lockout tagout devices. They may not help or perform service or maintenance on locked out devices. If they need to assist with the work, they become authorized employees and must be trained as such. Affected employees must be trained on the purpose and use of the energy control procedure. Other employees work in areas where lockout tagout occurs, but do not work on or near the equipment. Other employees must be informed of lockout tagout procedures and must know not to attempt to start any locked or tagged out equipment. The employer must provide written procedures for lockout tagout operations. The procedure must include, at a minimum, a specific statement of intended use, specific steps for shutting down equipment and isolating hazardous energy, process for placing, removing, and transfer of lockout tagout devices, responsibility for lockout tagout devices. Testing requirements for determining the effectiveness of the lockout tagout energy isolation. The employer need not document the required procedure for a particular machine or equipment when all of the following elements exist 1. The machine or equipment has no potential for stored or residual energy or reaccumulation of stored energy after shutdown which could endanger employees. 2. The machine or equipment has a single energy source which can be readily identified and isolated. 3. The isolation and locking out of that energy source will completely de-energize and deactivate the machine or equipment. 4. The machine or equipment is isolated from that energy source and locked out during servicing or maintenance. 5. A single lockout device will achieve a locked out condition. 6. The lockout device is under the exclusive control of the authorized employee performing the servicing or maintenance. 7. The servicing or maintenance does not create hazards for other employees. 8. The employer, in utilizing this exception, has had no accidents involving the unexpected activation or re-energization of the machine or equipment during servicing or maintenance. While each system or piece of equipment is different, the steps of a lockout tagout procedure are the same. Preparation for shutdown. The authorized employee prepares for shutdown by gathering specific information about the machine or equipment. What is the type and magnitude of hazardous energy present in the system? What is the hazard of this energy, and how can the energy be controlled? In this example, the pump motor has electrical energy, and there is gravitational energy from the height of the stored fluid in the fermenting tank. Shutdown The equipment must be shut down in accordance with procedure. Shutdown must be orderly and controlled to avoid creating any additional hazards to employees. Isolation. Once shutdown is complete, the equipment can be isolated. The authorized employee must operate the energy isolating devices to eliminate any hazardous energy sources. Application of devices. 
The authorized employee must inform any affected employees that lockout tagout devices are being applied to the equipment. The lockout devices must be applied in a manner that will hold the energy isolating devices in the safe or off position. Removal of stored energy. After the equipment is isolated and lockout tagout devices are applied, any residual stored energy in the system must be removed. Capacitors, batteries, coils, hydraulic accumulators, and fluid piping systems are all common sources of stored energy. In this example, the fluid in the piping, downstream of the isolation valve, contains stored energy. The technician can eliminate this stored energy by opening a downstream valve and draining the piping system. Verification of isolation Before starting work, the authorized employee must verify that the hazardous energy is isolated. This is most commonly accomplished by attempting to start the equipment with the normal control switch. In some instances, verification of isolation may require electrical readings, or more complex analysis. In this example, the employee verifies isolation by attempting to start the pump at the control switch, and checking the system pressure gauge. Now that the six steps of lockout-tagout are complete, work may commence. Release from lockout-tagout When work is complete, the equipment may be restored to its normal condition. The authorized employee should inspect the work area, to ensure that non-essential items have been removed, and the equipment components are intact. Employees should be safely positioned, or removed, during the release of lockout-tagout. After lockout or tagout devices are cleared, and before a machine or equipment is started, affected employees shall be notified of removal, and re-energization. Lockout tagout devices must be removed by the authorized person who installed them. Forcible removal is permitted, if special conditions are met. The company energy control program must include procedures for forcible removal of lockout tagout devices. Employees must be specially trained on lockout device removal. If these conditions are met, the employer may authorize the removal of a lockout tagout device. First, the employer must verify the authorized employee is not at work. A reasonable effort must be made to contact the authorized employee. The authorized employee must be informed of the lockout device removal before work is resumed. When servicing, or maintenance, is performed by more than one employee, the employer must designate an authorized employee responsible for the overall lockout procedure. This authorized employee must Determine the exposure status of individual group members Coordinate the overall lockout operation between the individuals involved and different work shifts each authorized employee must attach their own lockout device to the group lockout device before working and remove it when they complete working. If work is continued to another shift, the oncoming shift authorized employee must attach their lockout device before the offgoing authorized employee removes theirs. Lockout tagout summary Protects from hazardous energy and unexpected startup. Employers provide procedures, equipment and training. Employees must use lockout tagout. Required for maintenance or bypassing safety devices. Written procedures are required. Six steps to lockout tagout. Step 1. Preparation for shutdown. Step 2. Shutdown. Step 3. Isolation Step 4. Application of devices Step 5. Stored energy removal Step 6. Verification of isolation Release from lockout tagout Each authorized employee must use their own lock, 